Hi guys, I'm Jen Johns. Welcome back to the channel. April the giraffe is definitely the world's most famous giraffe currently. She lives over on the eastern side of the United States with her partner Oliver and they're currently live streaming. Well, the zookeepers and the staff that work at the zoo are currently live streaming April because she is going to be having a baby any day now. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out April's live stream, I'll put a link in the description box for that. April and I came to an agreement that if I was going to make a cake and call it the April the Giraffe Cake, she would have her baby today on April 1st. So let's put this cake together really quickly so we get that baby. So the first thing we need to do is put together our hidden giraffe pattern inside. So here I have a nine by 13 chocolate cake here and I'm just going to cut it into random pieces, random shapes. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to place it into some vanilla cake batter. Now this vanilla cake batter is actually from my pink zebra cake and it's made with oil, which means it's going to flow a little bit better. So that's why you're, you're gonna to need to use this one because it's a little bit easier for you to get the cake to basically fill all those gaps in between the chocolate pieces. So once you've got a decent amount of cake on the inside here, you're going to cake some more cake batter, some of the vanilla, and you're going to cover it completely. So you want to make sure that all of the chocolate pieces of cake have been covered because that's going to keep them moist during the second bake that they're going to go through. When you're baking cakes the second time, they do take a little bit longer than it would have the first time. So I'm going to be putting this into a preheated oven at 350 degrees and I'm going to have to bake it for about 35 to 45 minutes. You just want to make sure you watch the center there and make sure it's um, cooked completely. So I've got a little bit of a gap in here so I want to fill that gap in and I'll just keep adding to this and you're going to want to repeat this at least six times because I've got six layers to my cake. Once your cakes are baked, cooled and leveled, you can start stacking them with a thin layer of a buttercream in between each layer. Because this is going to be so high, I'm not putting very much buttercream in between either any of the layers at all. Now, if you need a recipe for the buttercream or like I mentioned, the pink zebra cake for the vanilla cake batter, you can find that link in the description box. So I have all of my layers here stacked and I had them covered in a thin coat of white buttercream. I've got my best delicious chocolate buttercream along here on the bottom and I'm just going up in kind of basically making almost like an ombre effect here using lighter colors of brown along the way. So you could use basically chocolate buttercream to cover your entire thing if you wanted to or you could use vanilla buttercream and just color it in these brown tones. So here in this one, I only used about four drops of chocolate brown in my vanilla, in my vanilla buttercream. And then in the lightest one, I used one single drop into it. And I also added a little bit of yellow into this one as well. So I want to make sure I cover the sides. I'm going to be scraping it down so I don't need all of the spaces filled in. So now I'm going to take you either take like a bench scraper or you could do a long uh, spatula or I'm going to use an icing scraper here. And I'm just going to line it up here on the side and then I'm going to just basically kind of blend the side together and I can go around as many times as I want until all of the icing has blended together. Now to finish off the top, we're going to take our lightest buttercream and I'm just going to kind of circle that around here. And then I'm going to use a small offset spatula to smooth it out and have a nice smooth top. So with our cake buttercream covered and in the fridge, what we're going to work on next is all the different parts of the giraffe that we want to put on top. So I've got here a nice round piece of brown fondant rolled out. I'm just going to cut it in half and we're going to make this into the ossicones, which are the little like antler like things on the top of a giraffe's head. So I've got it standing up here. I'm just gonna take my knife and what I'm doing here is I'm just going to try to give it a little bit of an effect of hair because it almost looks like little tufts of hair if you look at the top. So then I'm going to take a paintbrush and some black powder coloring. So you can use this kind of coloring for mixing in your buttercream, mixing into your chocolate and that sort of thing. I'm going to use it today 
for just adding a little bit of color dimension to parts of the ossicone here. And it does get a little bit messy, so be careful with it. So I'm just going to kind of gently tap it in between all of those little cracks that I made there and just add a little bit of color and dimension to the top of the ossicone. So those, I've mixed in some Tylos into all of my fondant here. So it's going to harden faster and it's going to allow me to work with it a little bit sooner. So I would just keep adding color to these like this. And then at the bottom, I'm going to insert a dowel because in order to get them to stay on the head, we need some way to have them attached into the cake. So I'm just going to take a sharp skewer and I'm going to insert that into the middle there just so I have a little guideline so I can use it later on in order when I'm assembling that. So you're gonna to want to repeat that for two of the ossicones. Now here with the, the ears, I've got some brown fondant laid out and again, it's mixed with some Tylos and I've just got a rough cut of an ear out here. We're going to need two obviously. And so we're just, I'm just freehanding it, just kind of making like a little arch, then connecting those pieces there you can peel that away, your extra fondant. And then I'm also going to move on to some lighter brown and I'm going to freehand that as well. You could use flour, um, like I found that flour cutouts and flour um, cutters are really helpful for making this kind of shape. It's almost like a half of a leaf here. So I'm just freehanding that. Now you're gonna take that and using a little bit of water and I've got a water pen here. I'm just going to take a little bit of water on the back. I'm just going to attach it there and then press that into roughly the center here. We're going to be um, wrinkling this together. So I don't want it right at the bottom or I'm going to get a huge excess of fondant, which I don't need. So we've got those laid in the center there. You can rub them, smooth them out a little bit. Now you're going to pick one up. And then at the bottom, we're basically going to accordion fold it. So I'm just trying to gather it like this because I'm going to give it a little bit dimension. When you do this and it's got the, the Tylos in it, um, you, you're going to find out that it's going to like curve like that, which is the exact look that we want here for these ears for the side of the giraffe head. So we've got that like that. We've got the last few pieces of fondant work to do. So here I have a long piece of black fondant rolled out. I'm going to cut it roughly in half here. And then on the end of each of them, I'm going to slice right into it, probably about half of an inch. And that's going to be the eyelashes. So I'm going to curve the um, other part of the eye. And then I'm going to kind of twist up the two little eyelashes at the back to make it look like it's a smiling giraffe. Just doing that again for both. So repeat that for both of the eyes. Now here I have a piece of black fondant also rolled out. What I'm doing here is just cutting into it totally randomly, about inch, three quarters of an inch in length just down into the fondant here. So I'm just kind of making it nice and jagged. Then I'm going to take the end and I'm just going to roll up that end bit so I've got all of these little pieces. You will have to pull them apart because they do, the fondant will stick together. And then this is going to be the tail. So you want to separate all those little pieces that you cut like that. So you've got a cute little tail for the end of the giraffe's tail. Now here I have lots of brown fondant rolled out and these are going to be the pattern for the giraffe. Now I'm just going to take a blade again and just randomly and I'm going to add different shapes, straight lines, curled lines, and I'm just going to cut them into a giraffe pattern. So I used a large skewer to basically make the pilot holes here where I'm going to put the ossicones. I'm also going to use it basically as a landmark because I'm going to put my giraffe pattern behind these and then down the side. So I've got my different pieces here. My cake is nice and wet and I'm just lining up the little pieces here. I'm leaving like a little gap in between the sides there. I just want to make sure that I am covering everything that I want to have covered up here. Our final few steps are putting the ossicones in the top here. We've got to put the ears on as well. So I'm just going to use like a little bit of buttercream on both sides here. And then I'm just going to gently press the ears into that buttercream there. 
like that. You could use a dowel or a skewer to secure those if you're not comfortable with the buttercream, especially if you're having to transport it, you might want to add that as a, just a little bit of security there. So also down in the front, I've marked where I need to put my eye. So I've got to put that other one on here like that. And I want to stick it on there with some water on my, uh, water on my buttercream there as well. Get that pressed into there. And then along the side here, I'm going to take my medium color of buttercream and I'm just going to start sort of near the back and I'm just piping a round little piece here and this is going to be the tail. So I'm going to stop about there. Then I'm going to take the little black tassel kind of looking thing that we made earlier, press that into there and then I'm going to take some additional pieces of brown fondant and press those into the tail. So here you go everybody, the finished April the Giraffe cake. I've got it cut open so you can see the hidden giraffe pattern on the inside. I added a little bit of the black powder to the pattern on the outside of the fondant here just to give it a little bit more dimension. Now if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it because the more likes and shares the more April's going to have her baby faster. Thank you guys so much for watching.